Hi, I'm Zach, and this is another product review with MakeUseOf.com. Today, the product we're gonna be taking a look at is the Q5 robot vacuum from Roborock. The Q5 packs in a ton of cool features, especially for its $700 price point. So in my experience with robot vacuums, there are essentially two major features that will help determine the price of the robot you're looking at. Those are gonna be the way it navigates, does it randomly sort of bump into furniture until it figures out a path, or can it actually map out your house's floor plan? And the second one being, can it empty itself? Most robot vacuums that include one or both of those features, you're gonna be looking at a price tag of at least $1,000. The Roborock Q5 is only 700 bucks and it has both the auto emptying dustbin and its docking system and it will 3D map the floor plan of your house to remember for future cleaning sessions and you can view those in the app that you'll need to operate the vacuum. So the Q5 seems to be in a pretty interesting place. It appears to be Roborock's attempt at including some of the premium features on a more mid-range robot. So how does it actually stack up to the competition? Stick around and we'll go into a little more detail about what this thing is capable of and what's it like to actually use it. The Roborock Q5 starts out with a great unboxing experience. Right off the bat, the first thing that you're gonna see is a quick start guide as soon as you open the box. It clearly labels all the components that you'll expect to find inside and gives easy to follow instructions on how to install the base and the docking station. The installation process is super straightforward. The docking station comes in two separate pieces. There's the base and the dust bin itself. On the bottom of the base, you'll find six screws that are already in the exact spot they're supposed to be, as well as a screwdriver just attached to the base. So you can pop it onto the dustbin part exactly where it'll fit and screw it together, and that's all it takes, and you have your docking station complete. Also on the quick start guide are a few quick tips and tricks on how to prep your home for your new pet robot, as well as a QR code to download the Roborock app. Now, you will need to download the app in order to operate the vacuum, as well as use any of the many, many cool features that the Q5 comes with, but we'll get to those in just a little bit. The last few things you'll find in the box are the power cord that you connect to the docking station to plug it in, one additional dust bag. These are disposable and one of them comes already installed into the docking station so you get one spare. And last but definitely not least is this cleaning brush tool, uh, which is pretty small. I almost missed it while I was unboxing, but you definitely don't want to lose this thing. It'll be very important for maintaining and upkeeping your robot. That's essentially everything that the Roborock Q5 comes with, so let's get into its features. So here it is, this is the Q5 robot vacuum itself. Um, as far as features on the actual robot, there are only two buttons on the surface right here. Besides the very obvious features of those buttons, you can tap the power button once to pause the robot at any time. So if it like runs over a sock or something, you can pull that out and then just unpause it, it'll go right back into cleaning. Or if you press and hold the home button for five seconds, it will initiate what is called a spot clean. And it'll just clean in a five foot square area of wherever you've left it. On the back right here, there's little grips for you to remove the dustbin like so. And on the bottom, you can see the roller right here. This is where it sucks up most of the debris into the dustbin and you can actually remove that. And this little brush here on the side is what it uses to sweep up bigger stuff to get into the actual vacuum. So those are the big obvious things. Uh, but the first thing that I thought when I saw this is that this center button that actually does press like a button uh, is not a, a button in the sense that you think it is. It doesn't actually have a function. I don't really know why it can press down like that. What this protrusion on top actually is, is the robot's light detection and ranging system or LIDAR. This LIDAR system is what the robot uses in order to create the 3D map of the floor plan of your home and you can actually see it spinning around while the robot is cleaning. And like I said, a lot of other robot vacuums in this price range will just sort of randomly drive around and bump into stuff and learn the layout of your home that way. So the first time you fire up your Q5 and it leaves its docking station, it won't be doing much cleaning. It'll actually just mostly be exploring your house, which is pretty fun to watch in real time on the app. You can actually see how the robot sees and how it's mapping out your home's floor plan. And since we're talking about the Q5 mapping at your home, we might as well talk about the rest of the app because it is the main interface you're gonna be using to control and set up everything else that the Q5 does. The mapping feature works really well. And it's really cool to see from the robot's perspective 
how it constructs a 3D space that it will remember for all future cleanings. Once the mapping process is complete, you're given quite a few options on how you want to customize your map and how you want your Q5 to interact with it. You can set up invisible walls or a no-go zone, maybe around your desk if you know there's gonna be some wires or something like that under there. And the Q5 does a great job of recognizing these barriers very accurately. In addition to setting up boundaries, you can actually divide up and label the rooms in your house any way that you want to. So in the future, if you're wanting your Q5 to clean up in a specific area, let's say like the kitchen, you can send it to just the kitchen. There are four different suction settings, including a quiet and a turbo mode. And if you're looking for a truly hands-off experience, you can even schedule the Q5 to start cleaning at regular intervals, like after a meal or at the end of the day. And with its self-emptying docking station, it makes it feel like you can really automate your cleaning process. So those are essentially the big talking points for the Roborock Q5. All pretty impressive. I have personally got to have this thing for a little over two weeks, and now I'll talk about my personal experience with it. The short answer is that in my experience, the Roborock Q5 works. It does its job. The floors of my house are much cleaner, and that's because it's easy to clean them more consistently and more regularly than I ever could manually. However, the Q5 is not perfect. And while Roborock continues to lead the pack in innovation for robot vacuums, there are a few things that I would like to see improved upon for the next generation of models. So let's go back to that first feature I mentioned, being the Linear system that is this thing that sticks at the top. That's what helps the robot to map out your house. Mapping out your home's floor plan can be really convenient for future cleaning sessions for a lot of different reasons that I mentioned. And if your home is multiple stories, the Roborock can remember up to four different floor plans. So if you put it upstairs and it's been there before, it'll just take a second to position itself and it'll remember its cleaning routine as normal. The cost that this comes with is like I mentioned, I thought that the liner system was a button. And I still don't really know why you can press it in and it makes that noise, because as far as I know, that doesn't do anything. It mostly just adds even more height to the already almost four inch tall robot. And with it being as tall as it is, that means this thing basically doesn't fit under any of the furniture in my house. And you will see on a lot of other competing models, most of which don't have the same 3D capabilities, that there isn't anything protruding out of the top like this and that it's completely flush so that it can fit under stuff like couches. Now there is a difference between the light detection and ranging system versus like a camera or something like that on the front because there are some robot vacuums that have a camera on the front that can help them recognize certain objects. And I bring that up because it was not uncommon for the Q5 to get stuck or hung up on certain objects in my house. However, anytime something like this happened, I wouldn't pause or adjust the robot in any way. I would just give it a few minutes and it was always able to figure out a solution and get itself unstuck. And unfortunately, that even goes for my Roborock's very first cleaning session in which it wedged itself underneath my dishwasher. And I didn't pause it, I didn't touch it, I let it figure out on its own how to get unstuck, which it did after just a few seconds, but not before it left a huge scratch here on the front of it. In addition to the big scratch that it gave itself, the bumper on the front of it is also just covered in scuff marks. And in general, this thing looks like I've had it for much, much longer than I actually have. I've only been using it for a couple of weeks and I haven't even been running it every day. That brings me to the handy dandy cleaning tool that I've talked about a couple times already. The brush on one end is extremely well suited to uh, cleaning the top of the robot. There are lots of cracks and creases that debris can get stuck in, uh, but this brush does a really nice job of getting all that dislodged. The part of this tool that's actually essential is on the other end. This hook that has a really small blade on the inside of it is for removing hair. And as you can see underneath the robot, there are lots of spinning parts for hair to get tangled in. And in particular, if it gets tangled in the center roller, it will actually prevent the vacuum from being able to auto empty itself at its docking station. Now, obviously I've got pretty long hair, so I think it's inevitable that it was eventually gonna get tangled up in here and then I have to clean it out at some point. But what I am kind of surprised by is how frequently I was having to do that and how much it impacted the Q5's performance particularly in how well it'll be able to clean and suck up debris when there's hair tangled in it, and how sometimes it won't even be able to auto empty itself at all if there's anything blocking it. I found the amount of hair removal and maintenance I had to do surprising, not only because of how it would impact features like the auto emptying, but also because how pretty much across the board, anyone developing robot vacuums will feature pet hair and pets in their advertising. And that includes Roborock. The commercial for this product features it sucking up pet hair. And to be fair, maybe pet hair doesn't clog the main roller as much as human hair does. 
but I'm sure that it does get caught up in the wheels and the brush and everything else just as easily, and you're still gonna be having to cut that out and maintain this thing quite a bit in between uses. So while we're talking about the auto emptying feature, I might as well segue into my other main frustration I had while using the Roborock Q5, and that would be trying to empty it manually. It seems like the only way Roborock wants you to empty the vacuum is through its auto emptying feature, even though the dustbin is easily accessible on the back. If you take a closer look, the only opening on it is the small hole that the vacuuming and auto emptying process use. So even if this were full right now and I wanted to empty it, there's no way to get it to come out of this little hole other than maybe shake it over a garbage can a lot or manually stick your fingers in there and start grabbing out dust bunnies one by one. Also with the way it's situated, the first time that I did try to empty it manually and I pulled it out of the robot like this, there was enough dust and stuff that it just kind of spilled out on top of itself and all over itself and back into the robot. And that's when I found that I had the cleaning tool because I needed to use the brush after that. There's just not really a good way to empty this thing manually. Thankfully, even after using this thing as much as I have, I'm still on my first disposable dust bag and it looks like it's still got quite a lot of room left in it. So the auto emptying feature is nice, but you can only expect it to work if you're consistently cleaning and maintaining your vacuum cleaner, which at that point, you might as well just let me empty the dust bin myself. And that's really the biggest piece of criticism that I have for the Roborock Q5. Overall, Roborock delivers with an app that gives you an insane amount of control and customization over your robot, and the robot vacuum itself comes with premium features at a much more affordable price. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you again in the next one.